A very happy day to all. I want to add a little preface commentary to the video you're about to watch. I made this about two weeks ago with my great niece who is up visiting and he's 11 years old, Ethan. He did a great job with this pesto and loved making it. And for a young person, he was really amazed at how good it was as compared to jarred pesto. So having said that, I encourage you to make it maybe just once with a mortar and pestle because it's so different. This time of year, as I am recording this, it's late July in Northwest Ohio, and it's best to make this with basil grown now through mid, maybe the end of August because the leaves are so much tender. Um, when I recorded this about a year or so ago, it was late September and I was getting everything out of the garden and the leaves just become a little bit more more coarse shall we say anyway now's a great time get yourself some basil and give it a whirl because it's so good make extra to put in the freezer just cover it with a little oil it keeps great so if you find yourself in the Toledo Ohio area Saturdays is market day and there is so much at the market right now I have so many great friends that I've met new and old friends at the Toledo Farmers Market. It's a good time to get to know your farmers. There's so much coming in season. There's some local sweet corn now. There's all sorts of berries. There's all sorts of vegetables. There's just so much that I just can't name them all. Lettuces you can buy. Uh, <clears throat> quite a few organics are down there. Come have a lemonade. Get some great soaps from Lori, she made me a salve for my ankle not long ago. It's just heavenly stuff. There's just so much. Berry bowl from uh, Joan for berries you might be cleaning. Anyway, come down to the Toledo Farmer's Market. You won't regret it. And it's not all that crowded, so you can get in relatively fast, in or out, and come see what's down there. Have a cup of coffee while you're down there. See you soon. I hope you enjoy this video fall where I live, temperatures are dropping down into the 40s and for sure the 50s at night, which then absolutely torches my fresh basil. Hi, I'm Diane Rogers. I want to show you how to make some pesto with basil that you should be getting out of your garden right now. It's mine doesn't look the best because the cold has hit it, so some of the leaves have turned black, but it'll still make a pretty good pesto and it beats paying for basil in the winter when it's very expensive for us here up north. So here what I've done is cleaned the basil. I did grow some Genovese basil this year, which is excellent stuff, and I took all the stem out. I want to show you how to make this in a mortar and pestle. Um, it's really a wonderful tool for making pesto because it grinds the pesto as opposed to cutting it which gives a lot more flavor. I'm not saying make 10 pounds by hand like this, but by the time, if you have everything ready to go, some fresh peeled garlic, some good kosher salt, except this happens to be some um, wonderful French sea salt, and some extra virgin olive oil and Parmesan Reggiano, and some pine nuts. If you have everything ready to go, you can actually make this in the time it takes to cook the pasta. I am going to start with the garlic. Now I took it out of its skin but I want to take the what was the root end off because that's going to be a little bit too tough. That is going to go to the bowl with a little bit of salt. I am going to pound and start smashing this up with the salt just to create a paste out of that. Now I'm going to slowly add in some basil leaves and keep pounding, stirring. It's a combination of kind of smashing, pounding, and stirring around the edges. Come up the sides and keep it going. I really like this mortar and pestle. It's also good for more than just basil. Use it to grind your spices, make guacamole in it. Uh, I made a preserved lemon aioli in it, and absolutely wonderful. Take some preserved lemon, rinse it, take the skin off, 
put it in the bowl with some fresh garlic and then mayonnaise, whether it's store-bought or whether you make it yourself, I find that some Hellman's works just fine and cuts a lot of time off. And oh my gosh, it's a good dip. It's a good sauce for shrimp. Preserved lemon mayonnaise is absolutely wonderful. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more fresh basil leaves. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, but it's smashing up to a paste just fine. Keep pounding away till you have a paste. I'm going to add one more round of basil in there. I'm going to add a pinch more salt just to help the grinding process and the pounding process of this. This is a nice bowl. I got it from Liam Sonoma and I really like it because it's nice and tall. So when you're making pesto in it, you don't end up wearing it because this will splatter out. Also, I did a I taught some people with a mulcati, which I really like, except mine is kind of old, and unfortunately, I think it's starting to break down a little bit, which added too much grit to it. So I had to retire that one. Very sad. After I have this pounded really nice to a paste, I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of pine nuts and we're going to pound those up with the basil. I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil, like a tablespoon to start with. I really like Zoe. Um, olive oil is an ingredient that is a lot of personal taste. Some people just don't like it. But with pesto sauce, what you want to do, in my opinion, by the best ingredients you can. There's only five ingredients going in this bowl, so you might as well make them really good. And Zoe is a decent price, and it's really good oil. Your big box stores have good oils too. Costco has some pretty good oil. Sam's oil is pretty good, and cost effective, especially if you're doing a lot of this. I am adding a bit more oil to that and stirring that in there. I'm going to add some Parmesan to it. Boy, this is looking really nice in this bowl. Kind of hard to see, but it's nice green. It smells so aromatic you wouldn't believe. And the little brown spots that I had on the leaf didn't seem to affect this. Now I'm going to add some Parmesan Reggiano. Doesn't take a lot. And I love my Mooly Grater. I've had it forever. It's a flea market find from about 40 years ago. And grind some, whoops, grind some Parmesan in here. You can't, you, you, gotta, you have to really use good Parmesan. Not the craft in the green container. Domestic Parmesan, uh, I don't know. Italians have been making Reggiano literally forever. And it really is the best cheese on the planet. In Italy, it's the king of cheeses. And so, now there's different grades of Parmesan, and that is based on how long it's aged. This happens to be two year, but I think they start releasing it after a year, and then 18 months, and then two year, which is just the best. All right, so since this is a nice looking paste, I'm going to put a little more oil in there. Oh, God, this smells so good, you have no idea. I am going to put this in the bottom of this bowl because this first batch I am going to toss with some linguine that I just cooked. The next batch I will have for some for the focaccia. So into the bottom of the bowl. Now the linguine, when you add pesto to pasta, you're not cooking this sauce. It goes in when it is just made and you toss the pasta in it 
but you don't heat it again. The heat from the pasta, if this is stone cold, if you make it in advance, the heat of the pasta will warm the oil to get it, get it coating the noodles. Add pesto, and then we're going to toss this up. Whenever you're making pasta, you always want to coat the noodles really well. It's not a blob of sauce on top of cooked noodles. You want to actually coat the noodles. When you're doing warm sauces, do them in the pan so that the sauce warms the pasta through, or the pasta warms the sauce through, either way, and the pasta actually absorbs some of the sauce as it warms, making it quite flavorful. I see a lot of Italian restaurants that just put the sauce on top, and that's not quite right. So anyway, there we have some linguine with pesto. Let's see what it looks like. Doesn't that look wonderful? On the pasta, French bread. Oh my God, this is going to be so good. I love pesto on bread. It's such a great snack. Great dip for shrimp too. There you have it. Pesto in a mortar and pestle. And I hope that you try it just once with this so you want to see what the flavor is all about because you will be quite surprised at how good it is if you're pounding instead of cutting it. And give it a try, see what you think, and leave me some comments. So I'm Diane Rogers. Thanks for joining in my kitchen and hope to see you soon. Well, we really should be trying this. I forgot that part. So let's go back. Not exactly the best choice. However, let's go back. I cut myself a little piece of focaccia that was just right out of the oven. Oh my God. It's really good. Really have to try this just once. It's really a different, very vibrant and very uh, flavorful flavor. So get the basil out of your garden, pound away. I'm back. You really have to try this. This pesto, Sunday supper, this is going to be heaven, absolute heaven. Linguine with the pesto, some homemade focaccia with the pesto. Oh, it's just really, really good. So do try it just once, just so you know what it is. Okay, again, thanks for watching.